Hello and welcome back to Riley Bikes. It has been a year since I've done anything in the garden. It's still kind of in lockdown. Wow. One year ago, I talked about how the KTM 690 Enduro was potentially the unicorn bike. Particularly in that video, I talked about how it could do everything. What makes a unicorn? Is it that it can go off-road and do most things? It could arguably do enduro, it can do adventure, it can travel, it can do track days, it can do road riding but you need different wheels and it's pretty light. No, it's not 100 kilograms, but you find me a 100 kilogram bike that's got 85 plus horsepower. It doesn't exist. And that's what this new video series is gonna be about. I am going to create the KTM 690 Big Ball Unicorn Bike Build series. <laughs> that's right. I'm gonna try and make a nearly 90 horsepower, 155 kilogram, good for everything, unicorn bike. Let's get into it. <laughs> Cut a very, very long story short. My neighbor ran over my bike and my neighbor's bike. His insurance company eventually we came to an agreement. Bike is not written off. I am going to repair it. It's all superficial damage. It's the perfect opportunity to actually build the unicorn. I'm a man of my word. The video I released a year ago, I talked about how the only thing that was really missing from this bike being the unicorn was the power for it to go up against other bikes on a track day. 690s are pretty good, SMTs are pretty good. They can carve, they're you know, super agile, but they don't have that serious, serious horse. Maybe the newer ones do have some pretty good horsepower, but they're not reaching up to the 90s, they're like 74 horsepower. I want 85 plus, that's what I'm aiming for. Let's do it. Let's build super high power, all singing, all dancing, all the trick mods, little bit of bling. 690 Enduro, Stroke SMC, Big Ball, Unicorn Bike Build. Let's do it. Right, so before I do start tearing through Boxilla Mountain, there are some quite exciting things coming. The value of that box, Jesus Christ. This is from a KTM dealership. It's unbelievably expensive what's in that box. It's just like a checklist of things. To take a bike from old to new in almost every way, it's really expensive. I mean, there are reasons why I didn't just buy, I mean, I could have just bought a new bike for the amount of money that I spent. Just to give you an idea of how much this project has already cost. Right, let's get the unboxing started. I'm gonna do this in stages because I haven't got much space. Dynajet, quick shifter, auto tune, and power commander. A load of tools, different variations of thread locker, piston ring thing that you use to get the piston back into the cylinder, valve compressing toolkit. I've got bags for bagging and tagging, assembly lube, torque wrench, uh, contact cleaner, gonna need loads of that, probably gonna get through loads of it. New mounting bits for the bash plate. Oh, yes, the bash plate and a few other bits, including the swing arm, are gonna be sent off to be reconditioned and probably Cerakoted, I imagine. Rally air filter kit, more capacity, needs more air. Inline fuel filter, golden one. I really wanted the black one, but unless you want to pay a fortune to get it from America, you can't. New hoses all round. These are just obviously the radiator hoses. What else do I need? I'm replacing all the hoses for the fuel as well, but I've already got that from the previous project. For the quick shifter, I need a different shift lever. You need to attach it to this. I just figured I'd get a new one rather than drilling the, the less aesthetically pleasing one. This is the rubber mounted steering stabilizer handlebar thing from America. Very exciting. So yeah, like I said, everything's gonna be as new as possible. Like I'm not replacing the frame. I'm not gonna recoat the frame, but I am gonna rebuild the wiring loom. All bearings are being replaced all across the bike. The forks have recently been rebuilt, so I'm not doing those again. I'm gonna have supermoto wheels as well. Not as like a permanent thing, just so I can switch between them. That's what makes it the unicorn, is able to use two sets of wheels. That's gonna be awesome. I think the rally fairing is gonna go, not permanently, but just like I'm gonna rebuild the bike to, you know, a maximum spec of standard shape rather than a rally setup, I think. I've gotta be honest, I don't know, I don't know what in, is in that box. I know what's in that one. I know what's in those two. I definitely know what's in that one. And obviously I know what's in that one. Bearing puller driver thing. UFO front mud guard. There's a scissor lift for lowering the engine out of the bike. So it doesn't just smash on the floor when I undo everything. Engine stand. So I can work on the engine from any angle. And now for the big one. I've never really understood unboxing videos. 
why do people film opening boxes? Like, why don't you just like show the box and then just like cut to the bit where it's open? Doesn't that make more sense? Like, what, what is it? Is that for people that are, like rubbing one out while boxes are being opened? Is that like a fetish or something? Yeah. Right, what have we got? Front headlight panel, side panels. Uh, it's really unexciting actually, isn't it? It's just bags upon bags of bearings and bolts and and bits and bobs and things that, you know, basically all the all the contents of, of the internals of the engine that need to be replaced is in here and in those boxes there. Gonna be mega. Right, so I've pulled the nuts and bolts and bits and bobs out of the big box. Well, what have we got? Rally camshaft. Pretty excited about that. Controversially, I've gone with the original speedometer. I know there are other ones that are much nicer out there, like the Trail Tech Voyager and stuff like that. But I actually want this particularly because of this little guy here. But we'll talk more about that actually when I get around to doing the front end of the bike. A load of bearings, like mixed bits and bobs, all sorts of, it's just nuts and bolts and all the consumables and seals and random replaceable washers, bolts that have to be replaced when you rebuild the engine, all sorts of stuff like that is in these things here. Oh my God, get on with it. The rain has abated. Come on, let's do this. Christmas day, neighbor up the road. <laughs> uh, apparently wasn't drunk the police did check uh basically ran over my neighbor my other neighbor's bike and my bike with his car got, there is a video of it it's so funny Bloody, oh, fuck, just come on just get on with it the bike was knocked over that way so it was hit by another bike here which is where the handlebar hit it it went down it smashed into our other bike which was on this side of it but the wheels were fine the swing arms got obviously all this paintwork here is knackered it's, that's broken there like this panel here where it attaches there is obviously broken. Um, the tower, when I took this off, is a bit, a bit on your wobbly side. That may just mean that the tower needs, it's got to be maybe a little crack in it somewhere underneath the paint where I can't see. For the time being, this is not going back on, mainly because I'm not going to be doing any rallies anytime soon. And uh, you can kind of tell that there's loads of areas where it impacted and it's caused all these tiny little stress factors all around it. So basically this is slowly, I imagine, gonna crumble. Let's try and start at the top. The front end is gonna go back to the stock headlight, but we're gonna do an LED conversion with low and high beam. We're gonna be upgrading this. This is all gonna be going and getting the Scots rubber mount that's gonna go up here. Handlebars are gonna stay the same. In fact, I'm not gonna change much for this. I'm not even gonna take off these grips because they are heated grips they're going to stick with the the enduro switches going to, obviously going to keep the heated grips this is being replaced this is my genuinely waterproof usb port thing like a lot of usb ports claim that they're waterproof but they're only waterproof if you put the cap on them so they're not waterproof if you're using them these are waterproof when you're using them which is amazing. So all this paneling is gonna go, the engine's coming out and it's gonna get completely rebuilt. All the fuel tank internals are gonna be replaced. We're gonna be putting on a off-road filler cap so you don't get mud into it when you pull this off when it's covered in mud. The plastics are gonna be replaced on here. The wiring loom is gonna be completely stripped, checked and rebuilt. Yeah, engine-wise, it's all about the big bore. That's gonna be... Swing arm, that's coming off. It's getting seracoated. I think I might get rid of these because let's be honest, everyone's too scared to get on the back of this thing with me. The seat's getting re recoated. Um, I have got the power parts seat and the power parts cover, but I think what I'm gonna do that is gonna put the power parts cover on this seat. What else are we gonna do? What else are we gonna do? Yeah, gonna cera prob probably gonna seracote these bits here. The chain, despite the tiny bits of rust on it, is pretty much new at the point the bike was hit. So are the sprockets, so are the discs and stuff. All the brakes, the calipers, they're gonna be rebuilt. The forks were recently rebuilt with all new fluids and stuff. This is gonna be changed. These are gonna be the black ones. This is gonna be changed to a genuinely black one rather than this shit paint job that I did. No, what else is gonna happen? What else is gonna happen? We're gonna put some hand guards on here, which are normally on there anyway. What other bits that I'm umming and I, like basically I've ordered everything that I need to do this project. I didn't wanna run out of budget, so I figured just slowly but surely buy everything. And when you finally got everything, then, 
start the project. I'm not going to be powder, re powder coating the wheels because, because they are adventure wheels or off road wheels, they just end up looking like that. So I don't see the point. Plus, I have got some supermoto wheels inside, so this is also going to be not a supermoto conversion as such, but more of a you know, it's a unicorn build. The idea is that you can use it for anything, so you can use it to go off road and you can use it to go on road and do track days and stuff like that, which is why I've got two sets of wheels. How many bikes can you put two sets of wheels on to make it the unicorn? You know, some people will say it's not powerful enough, but that's why I'm doing the big ball conversion so that when you are on the track, you can genuinely give it to some actual, you know, proper inline fours. A little bit, maybe? I don't know. It's probably just talking out my ass. There's only a couple of things left that I haven't decided on. Oh yeah, there's going to be a bash plate. So my big adventure spec aluminium bash plate, that's going to be Cerakoted in a different colour than black. So the one thing I haven't decided on is which exhaust to go with. Now I put this on because my Akrapovic grenaded, like genuine <laughs> Like I was lucky to make it home, like the, the end piece like here was just like hanging out all the like it's it was completely mullered but i've rebuilt it and i've in order to rebuild it so it actually stays together i've had to take an inch off of the end section here so that's my little sawn off krapovic i'm really interested to see what that sounds like it's going to be hilarious a little bit shorter it's already such an amazing sound but i've also decided that you know a lot of research has kind of shown that there's not much of a power loss from using the stock exhaust. Obviously, it's a weight thing people um and are about. But I've got two of these, and the other one, I'm going to cut the end off. I'm going to drill out the catalytic converter. And I'm going to weld the end back on. Right, let's take it apart. try and get this on camera. This is one of the reasons I've got to rebuild the engine. It started making this really weird sound. Let's see if, I'm not sure if you can hear, but it's like a And I think it's the, um, the counterbalancer shaft bearing is gone. If you've got a 690, just change the oil all the time. I've just cleaned off the drain plug. Then it's quite normal to see lots of little tiny, tiny little flakes of metal. But there were some pretty big chunks. Do you see that? That's one of the bits that was on the oil drain plug. It's a big old chunk of metal. And judging by the curvature on it, that's come from some bearings, I reckon. Right, day three, just taking it apart. <laughs> a bit of pain in the ass. <laughs> the swing arm pivot bolt has seized. I cannot get it out. But I haven't tried wiggling the engine yet, so this well, this morning I'm gonna wiggle the engine a bit and see if I can loosen up whatever corrosion is fixing it in place and hopefully I can start hammering it out. <laughs> see how I get on. Jesus. Right, so the trick is put your bolt in. Just did this on the other side. Use a proper hammer. And that has forced out the bearing on the other side, which is completely seized onto the shaft. But it is moving. I'm just gonna do a little backwards and forwards. The tricky thing is, is I do want the engine to be freed, which is secured in the middle, obviously. Um, 
but I don't want the swing arm to completely detach. So I'm gonna use this. sound. Right, so the swing arm is going to be swinging on this bolt. <laughs> Have a look at this before I pull it out. So you can even see this, the bearing that was on here is totally shot and even the little bearing roller pins are sitting in there. Oh, this needs to be replaced as well, Jesus. Three days. It's taken three days to get the engine out. Don't get me wrong. It takes longer when you're filming, but three days. <laughs> the swing on pivot bolt was seized. The exhaust header bolt was seized. Yeah, it's just there's a lot of seized things. I, I dread to think what the inside of the engine is going to look like. That's in episode two. Thanks for watching. What's going to happen in episode two? We're going to take the engine apart. We're going to replace all the bearings. We're going to do a bit of work on the exhaust. We're going to get it apart. And I've got to get the swing arm and all the other surrocated bits off to the surrocating place as soon as possible because it's going to take a few weeks for that to all be done. So we're going to get all that off. We're going to prep it. We're going to clean it. Stay tuned. See you in episode two. Like and subscribe.